from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Ernie de Ciccio. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from our donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Calgary, Alberta, in memory of his wife, Rosalie, who died on March the 6th, 2012, and for the deceased members of the Murray and Sheridan families. The second is the Giroux family from Toronto, Ontario, in loving memory of beloved Diane, wonderful wife, mother, and grandmother, who passed away on January the 18th. May we all continue to receive her strength and love. The Daily TV Mass Ministry is made possible by the generous contributions of all our donors, and in a special way, our monthly donors. For all those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those looking for a deeper awareness of God through their Lenten journey. Our thanks to all our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather to praise and worship God during this journey of Lent, let's take a moment to turn to the Lord and ask for continued strength and mercy and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who grant us by glorious healing remedies while still on earth to be partakers of the things of heaven. Guide us, we pray, through this present life and bring us to that light in which you dwell. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Micah prayed to the Lord in these words. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock that belongs to you, which lives alone in a forest in the midst of a garden land. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. As in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt, show us marvelous things. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of your possession? He does not retain his anger forever, because he delights in showing clemency. He will again have compassion upon us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all your sins into the depths of the sea. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and unswerving loyalty to Abraham, as you have sworn to our ancestors from the days of old. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O oh my 
soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord O my soul and do not forget all of his The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father, But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. 
But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years, I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Kind of a long gospel story. I guess I have to keep the homily short. I think most of us are familiar with the parable of the prodigal son, some of the most beautiful words that Jesus ever spoke, and they really speak to our heart. There's three main characters, of course, in the story, the father and the two sons. I wonder who we identify with the most. That younger son, the great sinner. What an attitude to begin with, to ask his father while he was still alive, I want my share of the inheritance now. If I was the father, I would have said, how dare you? You wait till I'm dead and buried, and maybe then you'll be in the will, or I might just give it away to other people. But this son had an attitude of entitlement. I want what belongs to me now so I can enjoy it in my youth. And who knows how he squandered it. But he spent it all. I've heard of people winning big lottery jackpots who do the same thing, eh? Doesn't last long. But thankfully, he came to his senses. When he hit rock bottom, when he was in the gutter, he says, I need to go home, but not with an attitude this time, with humility. I'll tell my father I don't deserve to be called your son anymore. Just treat me like any servant. That's what you call conversion. Throughout the Gospels, we hear stories of conversion. And this particular story teaches us that no matter how great the sin, it's possible to change and to be reconciled. And that's because the Father, who represents our God, is a God of mercy and of love, not a God of anger or of retribution, of punishment, a God of mercy and love, infinite mercy, unconditional love, You know, I often have parents come crying to me because their son or daughter has done something that displeased them in some way. Maybe certain choices they made in life. And I, all I ever tell them is, it's not your job as a parent to approve or condemn whatever they did. Your job as a parent is just to love your children. That's what we learn from our God. Love, mercy, compassion. We're 
We're not there to rub people's faces in the dirt. Hopefully, like the Father in the Gospel, as people of faith, we can all try to reflect that mercy and compassion of God. The elder son, of course, is something we can all identify with because it's so easy to judge others, others who've done wrong. Oh, they should be locked up. Oh, they should be put to death even. We can so easily be judgmental. This parable of the prodigal son teaches us so much. It's possible to change and convert no matter what we've done. It's possible to be non-judgmental and instead welcoming and forgiving. And most of all, it's possible for all of us to be like the Father and practice the same mercy and compassion to all our brothers and sisters. Let's offer our prayers now to the Lord our God. And our prayer is for all of those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those looking for a deeper awareness of God through their Lenten journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we should never stop praying for an end to the global pandemic so that we can all return to our normal life as family and friends. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask you to hear all of our prayers, those we have spoken, and the many more that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And answer us always with your mercy and with your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless Bless be God God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through these sacred gifts, we pray, O Lord, may our redemption yield its fruits, restraining us from unruly desires and leading us onward to the gifts of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. And now let's join together in prayer using the words that our Savior, Jesus Christ, has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this act of spiritual communion? My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your divine sacrament, O Lord, which we have received, fill the inner depths of our heart, and by its working mightily within us, make us partakers of its grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. 